Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we've got two special consoles to work on instead of just one. Uh, so specifically we're going to be looking at the Panasonic Q. So this is a version of the GameCube that was only released in Japan, and it's pretty desirable and collectible these days for a number of reasons. One is that it just has a really beautiful aesthetic. Like when you powered these on, it has backlit LEDs on the controller ports, which look great. Um, what's really cool though about it, apart from its aesthetic, is the fact that it can also play DVDs. So it has a full-size DVD tray. It shares some similar hardware components to some Panasonic DVD players from that time. And yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful. <laughs> it's a shame we never got these in the United States. They were only made in Japan. So that's exactly where these came from. These were imported straight from Japan to the United States. And uh, they look great, which is not often the case. Uh, shipping these is really tough. In fact, I'm no longer taking shipments of these for repair. Um, if you want me to fix one of these, you've got to you know hand deliver it to me because uh, I've just had too many problems with safely transporting them. Um, but yeah, so I don't know what kind of condition these are in. I don't know if they work at all. And what we're going to do is we're going to assess the situation, see if they work or don't work. And we're going to install region switches on both of these consoles. And so with that region switch, what we can do is we can toggle it in one direction and turn it into a GameCube that plays Japanese games, turn it uh, the other direction, and you've got an American console that can play American games. So this is extremely convenient if you live in North America. All right, so let's get started with the first one and see how it goes. All right, so I've got this one plugged in, and uh, before I, you know, powered it on, I also just kind of rotated the console around a little just to hear if there's any plastic pieces jangling around in there. That is a very common thing, uh, mainly because the plastic that holds the drive and the drive rails are, is really brittle and fragile, and it just can fall apart very easily. And I'm kind of shocked, but this one does not have that problem. So let's go ahead and just power it on and see what it does. Okay, awesome. So right now what I'm doing is I'm outputting directly via HDMI. I'm using a RetroBit Pixel um, adapter, which I'll just rotate the console here, and it plugs right in here into the digital port on the back and it works perfectly. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's booting into the menu. I don't actually have a Japanese disc, so I actually can't test the laser or the quality of it, but let's just see first if the... Um, if the drive actually ejects. So another very common problem with these is that the the, the drive has like a, a belt uh, that opens and closes or helps to open and close uh, the tray and it just goes bad over time. Wow, okay, that's amazing. I did not expect that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so with this guy, it's entirely possible that we might just need to do uh, the region swap. I mean, I did have to kind of give it some effort to close the the um the tray and that's also kind of common even with a new belt um so yeah let's go ahead and just go through and do the region swap uh, or the region switch rather on on this console all right so once all of the screws are removed you just kind of lift these metal plates up and down like so and they come off quite easily um and you can see this thing is packed to the gills. It's like a layer cake with just tons of PCBs and a lot of craziness going on. <laughs> so, all right, let's continue taking this thing apart. We're gonna take these cables out, these three right here. Come on. And then what you're gonna do here is you're gonna push inward and then outward like so to set these tabs free in the corners. And then back here, there's like a little lip or something holding it in place. And there we go. Now the top is off. To fully remove it, we're gonna take it like so. And there's a flex cable and then these two other cables here that attach the top PCB. Okay, so now we're going to do one of the more difficult things, which is actually removing the DVD drive. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to remove two screws. There's one right over here where my finger is, just, uh, just hiding right here. And then there's another on the opposite side, which I've already removed for convenience. Sometimes these are glued in place. Uh, these look like they are. But the screwdriver will just take the glue right off. 
Um, all right, so now, just like how we removed the top, we're gonna kind of push inward here and then outward, and then this comes right off. You have to be careful though. This plastic, if you're violent with it, you can break it. You don't wanna do that. There we go, just like that. And I'm not gonna fully disconnect this thing. I'm just gonna kind of let it dangle because I don't wanna really deal with it at the moment. Okay, so now here comes the probably one of the more difficult things, which is to remove the DVD drive. So there are these metal tabs that hook the DVD drive onto this back plate. So you wanna just kind of tilt up and then you kind of need to be very careful with negotiating it out of here. It's crowded. Like you kind of have to tilt away like this. There we go, I was caught on something. And now you need to do this with your left hand. So I'm holding this with my right and then with my left, I'm just gonna pull out these three flex cables here. There we go. And you can't relax yet. You've gotta disconnect the drive from the GameCube motherboard. So have your screwdriver handy And that's it. Now, this is a machine screw. It's different from the other ones, so keep it separate so that you don't lose track of it. Okay, so it's starting to actually look like a GameCube now. <laughs> so you can see under here, this is where the GameCube motherboard is located. This is where we're trying to get to because we have to get all the way to the bottom to do the region switch. Now that I have a little bit more space and I can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna safely remove the front panel. This is just as you would do with a regular GameCube. So I'm gonna just set that off to the side over here. And we're gonna disconnect the digital port. There's just two screws holding that in place. You definitely wanna be careful with the flex cable on this particular port, it's sensitive. And then you can kind of just like wedge it out from where it is. I'm just gonna leave this stuff off to the side. I don't really need it. Now, this is the secondary power supply. There's actually two. There's like a primary here and a secondary here. To disconnect this guy, it's got these little plastic snaps that hold it in place. You just kind of pinch them with a pair of um, pliers like so. And then just pull upward. And you'll get it disconnected. There's also a cable over here. These are power cables. There we go. <laughs> Wasn't quite out, not yet. And I think, yeah, I think I can get to it. Yep, there we go. Okay, perfect. Now, I'm at a point where I can remove this back panel and it's just but like before you push inward here and kind of outward on the plastic here very carefully and there's really not much holding it anymore oh i missed a screw of course i did <laughs> okay and yeah, now that just comes right off. Okay, so we're getting down to the end. It's not as bad. Um, this power, I think this is also power distribution here. You just, with your fingernail, push this little white tab in, and then you can pull this out. Remember the orientation? There's like a white stripe over here that faces towards the back of the console. And yeah, we are now at a point where we can get the GameCube motherboard out of here, which is what we've been trying to do this whole time. So there's a bunch of Phillips screws around the periphery. I'm just gonna remove them off camera. There's like six, I believe, total. Then there's these two smaller Phillips screws <clears throat> that hold these RF shields on. And then lastly, there's a little plug in here. This is for the, this is for the S video and the composite video from the GameCube. So I'm gonna just pull it out and show it to you real quick. 
not easy to do. I'm just trying to use the back end of a tool to get it out safely. There we go. It really didn't want to get out. So, so yeah, this little connector here, this takes the stereo sound, the S-Video, and the composite out of the GameCube, and it delivers it to this DVD board, this drive board here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove these final screws off camera, and then we will finally have the Game Boy, I'm sorry, the GameCube motherboard. All right, all those screws are removed, so now let's go ahead and take this guy out. And now we can actually get the shell, outer shell off, and we can finally see the Game Boy motherboard, I'm sorry, the GameCube motherboard on the inside. <laughs> sorry for that. Um, so as you can see, it looks exactly like a stock GameCube. There's only two differences. One is that the multi-out has been replaced with this custom connector, and this is for our analog video stuff. And then there's also this little daughter board here. This is for the digital video stuff. So otherwise, it is a stock normal Japanese GameCube. You could actually take an American GameCube or even maybe a European one, I'm not sure. Definitely American though. You could put that in here, and if you could swap out these connectors, you could plug it in and it would work. I've done it, so I know it's possible. Um, let's go ahead and remove these six final screws here, and that just gets the heat sink out. Okay, so now let's remove this cube and take a look at it. All right, so now that we've got the motherboard removed, let's safely take this heat sink off. You have to be careful removing this because um, there are some small components that you can damage if you just yank it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on this side over here, which has uh, a slight difference to it, you know, with these lower parts, the, the fins are not up here. And then I'm just gonna twist this tool counterclockwise and then that just releases it, just like that. Okay, and I don't particularly care if the thermal pads stay there or don't stay there. That's really not um, important. I mean, I'll, I'll have a look at this later when I put it back together. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and look closer now and do the region switch modification. Okay, so I've got us all zoomed in close up to the main chip on the GameCube. And the place where we're going to be soldering two wires is right over here where it says R6 on this version of the motherboard. So you can see there's uh, a resistor here, here, and nothing in the center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder two very fine wires to either side of where R6, this opening is where R6 is labeled. And so if these two points are bridged together, the console will behave as though it's an American console. If they're open like the way they are now, then it behaves as if it's a Japanese console. So the hardest thing about this is just being able to solder those points because the console is, I mean, those points are just really tiny. So you need like a fine tip like this, for example. You need a decent amount of flux. And then I'm using 30 gauge Kynar wire uh, just because it's a solid core and it's uh, the right size to work with. If you're trying to use larger wiring, it's just gonna be too awkward to, to do this. Okay, so there we go. It's uh, it's pretty fine work, and it does help if you have a pair of fine tweezers like this. Um, it's also nice if you have like a microscope or something to go uh, look up closer, but not necessary. I mean, I did it without it. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the wires on this motherboard, and now we can actually begin reinstalling everything. So what I'm going to do is just kind of route this wire here so that they're both kind of going out this way. And let's go ahead and start reassembling the console.
Okay, so I just wanted to pause here because this is probably the hardest part of disassembling and reassembling the Panasonic Q, and that is to reattach the DVD drive. That is definitely quite awful. Um, you do have a slight edge if you're a left-handed person like me, and, uh, and that's pretty rare. Most of the time, if you're left-handed, you're at a disadvantage, but this is one of those few times where you are at an advantage. So what you've got to do is you've got to use your right hand to hold the DVD drive in place, and then you also kind of have to hold onto this board here. I have it attached, so it's, you know, somewhat rigid, but, um, but not perfect. So you need to, like, use your, at least an index finger or something just to hold that down. Um, oops, this is the wrong screw. So now you got to take that machine screw and you got to reattach this connector here, like so. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reattach these flex cables. So there's three of them. And thankfully, they're all different sizes, so you can't mess that up. But what you got to do is kind of put pressure on the DVD board with one hand, and then with your left hand, get these cables inserted. Now, I've done this a bunch of times. That's why it's not so bad for me. But trust me, the first time, this is quite horrible. Oh, right. <laughs> This guy actually goes here. So hang on, let me do the middle one here. There we go, there's the middle one. And now this one here goes in the back. There we go. That's it. Um, now this power cable needs to go in. You just have to align it. There we go. And then you just push this white tab inward, and now this is locked into place. And then finally, when you're reattaching this, you got to leave. There's a flex cable and then this wire harness here. These guys have to stay up because they're going to attach to the top of the board. And then you just got to carefully reattach this and then get those two metal pieces hooked into the tabs on the bottom on the back rather. And that's about it. One thing that's interesting is I did have a careful look at this drive and it actually has indeed sustained damage, but it must have sustained damage in Japan. And it looks like some technician there, um, you know, epoxied everything back into place. And so that's why this one is in such good shape. It's really quite fortunate. Um, all right. So let's continue, get this thing reassembled, and then I'll show you how to finish the region switch here and we'll give it a quick test. Okay, so I've got those two wires that are attached to the motherboard, and you can see that I've attached them to this very small switch over here. So it's really as simple as it gets when the switch is actuated in one direction, it's North America. When it's turned in the other direction, you've got Japan. That's it. Now, I normally attach some double-sided tape to the top of this fan, and then I just, I just bring this guy and let it just hang out right here. So the reason why I do this is because this way it's not obstructive in any way. You don't have to cut any holes in the shell. I like keeping these as original looking as possible um, because they're really special and hard to find. And this way, you know, if you really need to, you can just remove this side panel and switch the region. The person who owns this is pretty much going to set it to American and probably never really change it. They just want to have the freedom to do so if they ever feel like it. So this is perfect for that kind of situation where 99% of the time you're playing American games and then on the off chance you want to play a Japanese game, just, you know, flip the switch and you're good to go. All right, so let me finish reassembling this thing and we will give it a quick test. All right, so I've got everything plugged in and connected up. Let's power this thing on and see if it's in the American region. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it totally works. So if I wanted to switch this back to Japanese, I'd actually have to power off the console, flip the switch the other direction, and then um, and then uh, turn it on again, and it would be in Japan. All right, so I've got a copy of Mario Sunshine. Let's go ahead and give this thing a try. 
All right, I can hear it reading at least. Uh, I forgot controller, so I'm just gonna reset the system. All right. So this is my American copy and it is totally reading just fine. Awesome. Okay, so we've got one Kim cube which is totally repaired and uh, has the region switch installed. So let's go ahead and move on to the second one. Okay, so Panasonic Q number one is all finished. So let's have a look at this one right here. This one's kind of cool. It has some kind of sticker in Japanese. I don't know, of course, what that means, but um, that's definitely not how it ships from the factory. So someone added this on later on in its life. So I've got it powered on. I did give it a quick shake and there are some little plasticky bits in there, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a chance and see how it does. Ah, okay, it's in DVD mode, so I have to hit game to switch it to GameCube mode. When you're in DVD mode, you're not gonna get anything out of the HDMI port. So let's switch. Okay, so it does boot, which is good. And it's telling me that the date and time is um, forgotten and you need to reset the settings. I know that's what that screen is. Let me try opening the drive. Oh, and there is absolutely nothing. Well, that's kind of to be expected. The drives almost always have some kind of issue. So let's go ahead and take it apart. Uh, this time I'm not gonna show you guys cause it's redundant from the first one. And let's just get to the drive and see what we find. All right, so we've got the DVD drive right here. And uh, I showed it to you guys before, but here it is in more detail. And you can see that just like how the Panasonic Q is like a layer cake of circuit boards, this thing is really no different. You've got at least two, maybe three boards on here. It's nuts. Um, and yeah, I've taken it out and it's in very good condition. There were some small broken pieces that I found. So there's this one screw here and, and uh, you know, two little plastic bits, but on the whole, it seems to have survived all of the traveling without too many difficulties. So yeah, the drive simply does not move at all. So what I'm gonna do is start by just taking this top lid off and there's just three screws to hold it in place. Oops, yeah, these two right over here. And then this is just like a ground strap right here. Okay, so now that that's done, there's like a little hinge here, so you can just hinge this up and out. There we go. All right, so here's our laser. And now what I'm gonna try to do here is just get to the mechanism that moves the drive. If I can't get it to it from the top, I'm gonna get to it from below and see what I can do to dislodge it. Okay. Ah, here's the gear, okay. It's really hard to show you this in the light. I'm gonna see if I can try to show you. But there is a gear right over here, it's white. And so I know if I, if I push on this, there we go. It'll start the mechanism. There we go, and now the drive is free for the first time in forever. <laughs> All right, so hopefully that was clear. I mean, now now that I've moved it a little bit, it's, it's right over here. And so you can just kind of push on it with a tool, which is what I did here. And if you have a stuck drive, that's what you need to do and it'll start moving. Um, so now I'm just trying to figure out why it's stuck. And uh, here's the drive belt right over here. So like I was telling you, this belt here goes bad over time. And you can see this one definitely has, like it's it's pretty, it's pretty gunked up and not straight. And thankfully I have a replacement. So I will go ahead and take that out. So there we go. Now this is completely removed. And so let's go ahead and replace this drive belt. 
All right, so I've got my replacement belt. This comes from console5.com. I've used those many times and never really had any kind of issue with them. And they seem to be the right size. So first things first, let's get this one out of here. So since we really don't care about it, we're just gonna cut it and get rid of it. There we go. Now, the replacement is gonna have to fit in between here. And this is not easy to do. Um, I actually don't know a way of getting this gear mech out of here. And so the way that I've always done this in the past is actually just to feed it into the teeth between this black gear here and this white plastic gear and just kind of squeeze it through. It does work. It might be annoying, but it works. There we go. I believe I got it. Yep, I did. So you just have to use a little bit of force between those teeth there, but um, once it's through, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And then we're just gonna hook it around here and just give it a little bit of a, a test. It seems to be just fine. And there we go, now we've replaced the belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this thing and then we're gonna give it a test and see if it works. All right, so I've got the system mostly reassembled, and just like before, I added a region switch. I didn't bother filming it because it's exactly the same as what I did for the first uh, Panasonic Q. So um, I think I have it switched into the North American mode, so let's fire it up. Okay, and the cube is in English, so we know that now we are in NTSC mode, uh, North American mode anyway, and that's awesome. So hitting the open and close button on the tray is working. So now let's see if this laser actually works because I have no way of knowing. Okay, let's see. Awesome, okay, so it's reading my game. So it looks like the second Panasonic Q is now also fixed. So now we have two of them. They both have working disk drives and they both have the region swap mod. So everything is all set. Um, all right, so that's about it for this video. If you guys like this kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out, you know, I try to have them out every week where I do repairs or mods or anything, you know, fun with retro consoles. And of course, if you have something that you need repaired or modified, you can always contact me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.